Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Unquestionably, the most requested story I've ever gotten on this channel happened over the weekend. And I waited a couple days hoping for updates that never came. So I'm going to do the story now. But I can't thank everybody who sent it because literally, it's in the hundreds. It's in the hundreds. I was walking along yesterday, pulled my phone out, and was just reading all of the suggestions for this story. One point, I think it was eight emails in a row that said, Steve, do this story, do this story, do this story. And then I had a couple people yesterday go, Steve, why haven't you done this story yet? <laughs> I was waiting to see if there'd be any updates because there's a couple questions we don't know the answers to, but we'll discuss that also. This was an exclusive from KGO, TV station out west. Northern California Sheriff orders raid on Indiana Batmobile Garage, allegedly as a favor for a friend. And this story's got some twists and turns to it, and of course involves the Batmobile. And of course the Batmobile is famously, famously created by George Barris. I've met George Barris. I'll put a photograph. I believe it goes right there. Nice guy. And um, I know it's based on a Ford concept car and all that, but that's not important here. The classic Batmobile from the TV series is what we're talking about here. There is a builder in Indiana who is licensed to build those cars. If you contact them, you can work it out, place an order, and they'll build you a Batmobile that's officially licensed by the people who own the rights to do that. But there's a problem with somebody in California who ordered one of those cars, and somehow then the sheriff from California sends people out to raid the shop in Indiana, despite the fact that California and Indiana are different states. But we'll talk about that. So the allegation is that the San Mateo County Sheriff sent a four-man team to Indiana to raid the garage that builds Batmobiles. And it turns out that one of the sheriff's friends ordered a Batmobile and wasn't happy with how long it was taking to get the car. Now, there's all kinds of issues going on here. But the first one that Dan Noyes points out here for KGO is that your public money paid for the trip by the sheriff's investigators. That's four round-trip tickets, three nights of hotels, meals, rental cars, and a lot of overtime. Just so you know, this trip cost taxpayers money. Now, I have to refer to some of these people by just their positions in the story because that's easier that way. So the man who's buying the car posted a profile video on his social media saying, real estate is a lot like surfing. And he is, in fact, a real estate agent. And he said, suddenly the perfect wave shows up right in front of you. You got to be ready to catch it. That's his quote. Now, the profile video also shows that man likes expensive toys. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. So he ordered a Batmobile from the only licensed builder, which is a company called Fiberglass Freaks in Logansport, Indiana. The Batmobile, if you ordered it at that time, would have cost you $210,000. But they don't have them in stock. They build them to order. A spokesmodel on a promotional video says, You wanted one since you were a kid. Now you can have your very own Batmobile. Complete with roll-top dashboard, flashing beacon light, and detectoscope. I suspect those things aren't functional, but the spokesmodel even adds you can get a working flamethrower. The owner of the company, Fiberglass Freaks, has nine Batmobiles in various stages of production. And he told the TV station that the buyer was first in line, but missed a $20,000 payment. And this is the fiberglass freaks guy telling the story. And the quote is, he disappeared on me for over eight months, almost nine months. So fiberglass freaks moved that man to the bottom of the list and said, you're going to have to wait a year and a half because the other people ahead of you are going to get their cars first. Fiberglass Freak says he didn't like that. He exploded. He did pay off the entire car at that point, but he was absolutely livid to find out that his car was going to be delayed. So the buyer of the car went and filed a complaint with his local police department, but the San Mateo County District Attorney declined to bring criminal charges at this time, according to a letter that was sent to the builder of the Batmobile, who was told this is basically a civil matter between you 
and the buyer. I can tell you right now, I had clients with legitimate beefs against people who had done things with their cars. I'll give you an example. Client takes a car into a specialty shop because he's got some wacky foreign car, brings it into a specialty shop because he can't find anybody who can fix the ignition in his car built in, like, say, Bulgaria in 1958, brings it to some guy who's got a shop. A month later, he calls. The phone's been disconnected. He goes to the shop, and, and everything is gone. He discovers that the landlord was upset about not being paid the rent, told that guy to get out of there. The guy got out of there what he could get out of there. What he didn't get out of there, the landlord took and just sold at auction. And my client's car is missing. And you call the police and guess what they say? Oh, that's a civil matter. You got to sue that guy if he took it. You got to sue the landlord if he took it. Well, wait, how do you sell a car without the title? It's a civil matter. You got to sue the shop owner if he took it. You got to sue the landlord if he took it. It's a civil matter. File a lawsuit. And you go, but wait, isn't that theft? Isn't, isn't that auto theft? It's a civil matter because you can sue them for it. Now, the police could prosecute, but they know it's going to be a mess to prosecute. And they'll say, you know something, just, just sue them. So it's a civil matter. It's a common thing that the police will tell you if you tell them that somebody's done something like this. So the buyer filed a lawsuit in San Mateo Superior County Court alleging breach of contract and fraud, which, of course, is saying it's a civil matter. That lawsuit was dismissed in March because the judge said this case belongs in Indiana. Indiana is the proper venue. I have had clients of mine who've done business in other states. Sometimes you can bring the case locally, sometimes, but more often than not, courts will say, let me get this straight. You're dealing with somebody remotely who's in another state, and they're in another state, and you paid them to do something in the other state, right? You sent them the money in the other state. They did whatever work they did do in the other state, and all of the evidence, witnesses, and everything is in the other state. Uh, wouldn't it make more sense to bring the action in the other state? And that's quite often what they say, and they, they'll say, no, just send it there. Theoretically, a judge could keep it in your state, probably, but they're going to say more, a more proper venue is down there in the other state. Then sources inside the San Mateo County Sheriff's Department tell the I team at the TV station that the man who's buying the car asked his friend, the sheriff, to intervene. The sheriff sent a lieutenant, a sergeant, and two deputies to Indiana where they raided fiberglass freaks on July 19th. Now, here's the question. We do not know if it was just the four of them or if they were accompanied by local police. And that is a huge question mark because Fiberglass Freaks tells a TV station they showed the warrant saying that they were here to seize anything to do with the car. So I thought, oh, they're coming in to pick up his car, which is right behind me. I thought I was going to have to move my other Batmobiles out of the way to be able to find it and let them take it. But investigators only took two files of documents according to the search warrant return. There was a search warrant, but which state issued it? Was it issued in California or was it issued in Indiana? Everyone I've talked to and everyone I've read who's written about this has assumed it was a California search warrant. But generally speaking... If you want to search something in a particular state, you get a search warrant that's valid in that state from a judge in that state. Now, if it was a federal issue, it might be different, but these are state issues and apparently some kind of search warrant, and they filed a return on that search warrant. So Fiberglass Freaks says they read him his Miranda rights, brought him to the local jail for an hour, but let him go. And so the fact that they took him to the local jail, of course, that is a jail in Indiana. So if four police officers from California walk into an Indiana jail, I know it sounds like a joke, four police officers from California walk into an Indiana police station with a local guy, I'm assuming they're doing it for an official reason. And what it makes me wonder is it makes me wonder if the four California cops didn't coordinate something with the local police and possibly obtain a local search warrant, which they could have done, by the way. 
And it would have been easier if they'd coordinated that with the local police, which we don't know if they did. But it's one of these things, when I read that, it struck me as there might be a little bit more to this that we're not hearing. Because they brought him to the local jail for an hour, but let him go. He wasn't locked up, right? He wasn't locked up. So why did they bring him to the police station? And it doesn't say. They simply brought him there and let him go. But he was there for an hour. So presumably, the four California cops are talking to the local cops for an hour about something. What are they talking about? That's my big question. Now, the guy from Fiberglass Freak says he later found out that they got a warrant for his Gmail contacts and photos and that they froze his bank account but it says simply that they got a warrant did they get that warrant in california or did they get the warrant in indiana and uh who is they is it the california cops or the indiana cops so theoretically just so you know theoretically the california cops could have come into indiana and gone through all the steps to get an indiana warrant and execute it. Now, I don't know if the, I don't think they'd be allowed to execute it on their own. They'd probably have to have an Indiana cop with them to do that, unless they're like deputized or something, but you don't hear about that very often. Uh, and then the question is, they got a warrant for his Gmail contacts and photos. Uh, is that a warrant to search the computers at his business or a warrant to search everything that's on the cloud? Because it might be that they can get to his Gmail's contacts and the photos that he keeps online through the internet, which might not require an Indiana warrant. Freezing his bank account, that's a different question. Uh, now, here's the other thing, and this is where it gets really strange. He was charged in California with two felonies. So when the cops showed up at his place and did what they did there and took him to local police department and did what they did there, he then later found out he's charged with two felonies. One, obtaining money by false pretenses. And two, diversion of construction funds. Now, the first one of those, obtaining money by false pretenses, is exactly what you think it is. Where somebody comes up to you and lies to you or presents a set of false facts to you to get you to give them money. And, it, and of course, you're going to get the money and skedaddle with it. So false pretenses would mean that to convict him, they've got to show that what fiberglass freaks presented to this guy was... False. So if the guy is building Batmobiles and making substantial work in that direction, uh, it's going to be kind of hard to make out a case for false pretenses, I would think. Uh, but number two, diversion of construction funds. Now you might say, Steve, technically speaking, when you're building a car, the word build is a synonym for to construct, right? You're constructing something, you're building something, right? right, right. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. <laughs> no one thinks that diversion of construction funds refers to car building. Now, I suppose it's possible. And I've got attorneys in California who watch my videos. If you are familiar with a case where somebody has applied this subsection of the California Penal Code to a car builder, please let me know because I looked the statute up. And the statute, I believe it's 484B, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, but it says specifically that if someone obtains money from you and they abscond with it, and there's references to building construction in the statute, that is constructing a building, okay? There it's a noun. So it talks about like a builder who's going to build a house or a building for you. They take money and they skedaddle. And of course, we've heard of that happening now, I've also heard of people in the car building business, car modifiers and so on, uh, who've taken money and skedaddled as well. But you think they'd have a specific statute that address car builders versus building construction because he's been charged with diversion of construction funds. And so the question then becomes, is the money that the guy did send in, was it diverted to some other purpose while he was constructing a building? I don't think he was. I also don't know that you can apply this statute to somebody in Indiana. Uh, that is, there's a California penal code that addresses um, builders in California. Uh, and even if you had hired somebody in Indiana to build you a building in Indiana, 
uh, I'd be curious to know if you could actually prosecute somebody in California for that. It seems like a stretch. And so in my opinion here, what's happening is that the sheriff was asked to look at this and they said, what can we charge this guy with? And they said, well, if, if you honestly think that you can prove that he took your money and never intended to build you a car, that would be obtaining money by false pretenses. But you're going to prove that he never intended to build a car at the front end of this, which is really difficult to prove. And second of all, diversion of construction funds. Somebody probably said, well, isn't that for construction cases? And somebody said, eh, we'll see. We'll see. So with respect to the fiberglass freaks guy, who, by the way, I, I empathize. I feel really bad for this guy because bad stuff happens, unfortunately, to all kinds of good people. I was horrified. I've never gone through anything like this ever before in my life. I am on the side of good. As a Batman fan since I was two years old, this is a completely opposite side. I love 66 Batman, and Batman always stood with the law. Now, when um, the TV station tried to speak to people about the case, it appears that the fiberglass freaks guy is the only person they could get a hold of for any length of time because they interviewed the San Mateo County Deputy District Attorney, who's prosecuting the case, and they asked her, you wrote a letter to fiberglass freaks in September of last year saying there'd be no criminal charges. What changed? And the Deputy District Attorney responded, additional investigation. The detectives were able to obtain search warrants and obtain additional evidence. So additional investigation and additional evidence. Now, the deputy DA would not discuss what that evidence was and would not discuss the sheriff sending four investigators to Indiana for what appears to be a simple business dispute. So the reporter asks, after the case went nowhere with the first criminal case, the civil case, is the sheriff stepping in for a friend here? And the deputy says, I can't speak to that. I have no knowledge about what relationship, if any, the sheriff has with the victim. I assure you right now, that deputy has had a talk with somebody saying, did you guys understand what was going to happen with this hornet's nest? Because I've gotten literally hundreds of emails saying, Steve, talk about this case. This case has been covered on every car site, every news site, every legal site, every... It's being discussed everywhere on the internet. And the angle that makes it hit the headlines is twofold. Two angles. One is the Batmobile and the favor for a friend. The sheriff stepping in and it appears doing a favor for a friend. So the DA, who's just told the police have brought this case now, take a look at it. The DA looks at it. Well, what's presented to the DA does not include a note saying, oh, by the way, personal friend of mine, take care of this case. I suspect it doesn't contain that note. So she says, I can't speak to that. Now, the TV station says, we wanted to talk to the sheriff about this uh, and about you know using public funds and so on. And the sheriff didn't return our repeated calls and texts. His office confirmed he's away for a month on vacation. But, and here's the kicker, he leaves office in January because he lost the election. So according to this, he is what we call a lame duck. He's out at the end of this year. So for him to do something crazy and goofy right now, yeah, why not? What are you going to do? Vote him out of office? <laughs> so the undersheriff is now in charge. And um, the department's spokesperson refused a request for an interview, citing this as an ongoing investigation. Yeah, an investigation is one word for it. It's a train wreck. That's what it is right there. It's also a train wreck. So, uh, Meanwhile, TV station ran the case by Tony Brass, a former prosecutor. What a great name for a prosecutor. Tony Brass. <laughs> he was a former prosecutor for San Francisco and the U.S. Attorney's Office. So he's done both. And he said, I can't imagine why it's in criminal court. It shocks me that it's in criminal court. He says this fight over what's in essence a luxury item, the Batmobile, belongs in civil court in Indiana, does not need any involvement by the San Mateo County Sheriff's Department, nor does it need any involvement 
by the uh, outgoing sheriff. It simply defies reason, in my view, why so many people, so many high-ranking members of law enforcement would have to go and enforce something so unnecessary and so trivial. And it is. I understand $200,000 is a lot of money, but it's, it's someone with money buying a replica Batmobile. This is not a struggle over world peace. The TV station did reach out to the buyer, uh, and they contacted him by phone from vacation. He was surprised when we asked him about the Batmobile. He said, I'm dealing with someone privately on that. TV station reporter asked him, who's that? And he says that the man then hung up. I wonder if the man on vacation has seen all the headlines. Investigating the story, TV station learned something more about fiberglass freaks. The man who owns it is a minister. And we watched his church sermon this past Sunday online. Now, Fiberglass Freaks tells us it's the only thing that helps me through this. I should expect trials and tribulations. It's just part of being a Christian. And as a preacher, you know, this is an attempt to besmirch my reputation. Meanwhile, the TV station reached out to the buyer. uh, Excuse me. They reached out to the lawyer for the buyer. He also didn't want to go on camera, but said his client is returning in a few days from vacation. And both of them will sit down for an interview. Fiberglass Freaks, meanwhile... Tells us he'll be flying here for his first court appearance in three weeks. So a bunch of stuff will happen shortly. We'll get more details. But what I really want to know is what actually happened when the four people from California went to Indiana. Because I would think to do that properly, you would probably call ahead. But you would speak to the people in Indiana and say, we've got a problem with something happening in your jurisdiction. We think a crime was committed, strangely enough, in California. We want to prosecute that in California. We want to execute a search warrant in Indiana. Can you help us with that? And then you'd say, and then we want to go out and execute it once we've got it in hand. Can you send some people along with us to make sure we do that properly? Because every state has its own laws. Crazy concept. So you would do that. And that would mean that when the shop got raided, there'd be people there with badges locally who'd say, we are from the local police department and we're here because we have a search warrant. And there are ways that this could be done completely above board. We just don't know. And I know a lot of people have assumed that the four people showed up with a search warrant out of California or with nothing, but there are references here to a search warrant and a search warrant return And the return is the document that's given to the court, among other things, to indicate what, if anything, was found by the search warrant and indicate who executed it and when and so on. But it's it's the last piece of bookkeeping for the court with respect to the search warrant. And so the search warrant return did get filed. We also don't know what the involvement was with the local police because of the fact that they did go to the police station. They brought him there. But it doesn't sound like he was booked or locked up or fingerprinted or mugshot. It doesn't sound like any of that happened. They said they brought him there and an hour later they let him go. So we don't know all of the answers. I apologize that it took me so long to do this video, both in from when I first heard about it till now and also from when I started the video to now. Sorry. Uh, but I was actually hoping for updates that would clarify those questions for me. And I mean, I was digging through Reddit, hoping somebody might know something. When you see me rooting around in Reddit, things have gone south, as I like to say, in my life, but couldn't find it there either. So that's going to wrap up the story. I will update this story. And people are going to ask, Steve, would you like to get involved in a case like this? This is the kind of case I would love to get involved with. The problem is it's going to happen either in California or Indiana, neither state in which I'm licensed. But if you said, Steve, they just raided some guy's business in Michigan in your backyard, On a case like this, I'd be all over it. I would be all over that. So uh, unfortunately, this case is not going to work that way. But it was an exclusive from KGO. Dan Noyes wrote it. Northern California Sheriff orders raid on Indiana Batmobile Garage allegedly as a favor for a friend sent to me by everybody. This shirt's a gift from a dear friend, Chris. Thank you very much, my friend, for sending it. And of course, In-N-Out Burger. Gotta love him. Questions or comments, please put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. 
Thank you for watching Leto's Law. An optimist is one who believes a housefly is looking for a way to get out.